Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Rahul Chobe from Physio TV. I welcome all of you. I'm handing over this session to Dr. Sopnil. Good afternoon to all the viewers of Physio TV. I'm Dr. Sopnil Ramteke. I welcome you all to the webinar on advances in myofascial release for Dr. Arun Mozi sir. Before we start, I will give a brief introduction of our today's speaker. Presently, Arun sir is working as an associate professor at Sardar Bhagwan Singh College, Dehradun. He is a PhD scholar at Punjabi University, Patiala. He has worked at many eminent institutes across the India, wherein Dolphin Institute at Dehradun, MSAG College of Chen uh, Physiotherapy at Chennai, Physiotherapy College, Raipur, Indore Institute of Medical Sciences, Indore, and Pondicherry University. Sir has completed his foundation courses in myofascial release from Brighton, United Kingdom in the year 2008. Sir has completed diploma in sports massage, BSY Devon at United Kingdom. Sir has completed diploma in yoga therapy from Kolkata. Sir has also published many articles on manual therapy and rehabilitation in renowned internationally acclaimed journals. Sir has received significant contribution award in 2014 to the field of physiotherapy in India at the 52nd Annual Conference of Indian Association of Physiotherapists at Indore. Sir has also won an award at the first World Congress on Manual Therapy at Mangalore, which was held in 2007. Sir has conducted hands-on workshops on the myofascial release techniques throughout the India in cities like Chennai, Madurai, Bhopal, Patiala, Rishikesh, Tirunel Valley, Kota, Ludhiana, Pondicherry, Raipur, Indore. Sir has also conducted workshop out of India, that is in Sri Lanka, Colombo, and Dhaka, Bangladesh. We are very eager to learn from you, sir. Without further delay, I request Arun, sir, to enlighten us with, our, with your knowledge. Over to Arun, sir. Please, sir. Thank you so much, Sapnil, sir. And then let's, uh, <coughs> you told very briefly, but you told very detailed one. Thank you so much. Uh, First of all, I uh, welcome you uh, with uh, cold weather in Dehradun and other areas. I don't know how it is. <clears throat> Good afternoon, everybody. So uh, today's topic, it is of uh, uh, advances in uh, my facial release. And uh, <clears throat> yes. I welcome you all for this uh, uh, topic, advances in my facial release. And one second, I, I go with the full screen. Yes, good. Okay. <clears throat> so everybody, you are able to see the screen, I think. If any problem, you can uh, send a message through the chat box. Yes. So advances in my visual release. What is my visual release? Uh, you you know or don't know? I don't know. Uh, straight away, we without wasting the time, we go to the introduction. Uh, not only the my facial release technique, uh, the other techniques also. Uh, the physios are uh, targeting the my facial trigger points. So the muscular and the skeletal systems, this is going to work interdependently to provide efficient movement. And this efficient movement can be inhibited by the facial restrictions and the my facial trigger points. So whatever my facial release we are going to give, so that we are targeting the facial restrictions. The fascia is a uh, over covering of the muscle. If uh, whenever injury is uh, occur over the muscle and uh, the muscle covering, the fascia loses its uh, water content. Otherwise, uh, the fascia is of uh, more uh, watery and it, it look like a jelly structure. So, which cover the muscle and which uh, allows the muscle to move or uh, slide well. If uh, this is my uh, muscle and the shirt covering is the fascia. If uh, I am doing like the motion, whenever I am doing a 
movement in the joint the muscle is going to slide okay the fascia which won't restrict if suppose an injury occur over that area that area injured area is going to change into a myofascial trigger point zone and the fascia loses the water content which will come and stick along with the muscle so it won't allow the sweet the smooth motion of the muscle or the smooth sliding motion of the muscle so you are going to get a restrictions in the fascia and the muscles which is going to restrict the range of motion and the other functions of muscles so when the muscles and the fascia are subjected to micro trauma the fascial restrictions may form and inhibit the normal muscular function and the trigger points may develop independently or in conjunction with the fascial restrictions resulting in inhibition of normal muscular functions so whatever manual therapy technique or yeah, whatever soft tissue release technique we are going to apply over the human body all the soft tissue techniques are which is going to target that muscle and the muscle overlying fascia so here i am not only going to talk about the only release of myofascial release and the other techniques also uh, we are going to do and targeting the same muscle and the muscles overlying fascia and how it does uh, decrease the range of motion and uh, what we are doing over that area so i have not included much of theory aspects but i will spill more right so <laughs> the fascia may contract as part of an evolutionary adaptation that prepares the body for activity as well as to attempt to protect the body from repetitive stresses by providing increased stability to the musculoskeletal system so it is going to give all the protection also and the smooth movement also the fascia so that's why the fascial releases are very famous nowadays and when the fascia get tighten or the fascia loses the water content so we get a decreased range of motion and altered neuromuscular properties and due to this we have decreased strength so all this thing we are going to deal with our rehabilitation not only the releases as well as the rehabilitation so all these adaptations can increase the perimysium thickness resulting in greater decreases in range of motion and everybody know this my facial trigger points what it is so many times we might have seen the internet that it is a hyper irritable spot within a taut bands of skeletal muscle or fascia that can further decrease the range of motion and inhibit the strength of the affected muscle and this this is going to give you a withdrawal reflex whenever we are uh, compressing over that uh, localized uh, painful spot so patient elicit a withdrawal reflex so they will move out of that area or they will complain pain over that area and the difference between the uh, trigger points and the tender point most of my uh, uh classes students they ask the participants they ask what is this difference nothing the trigger point which is going to give you a referred pain and the tender point which won't give any referred pain that's all so even in the tender point also you are going to see a muscle spasm um uh, uh in and around that area that is 2 into 2 cm they say but even we have a tension band also but without any uh, <coughs> referred pain but in trigger point we have a referred pain also so what is the difficulty we face in trigger points the referred pain going to cause another uh, trigger point also so we can say that the satellite trigger points so because of this another problem get started so that is the difference between the tender point and the trigger point in tender point we won't get a referred pain in trigger point we get a referred pain 
So I given here the common therapies. Uh, what are all the common therapies the clinicians used and uh, uh, other professionals like a strength and uh, conditioning professionals and athletes even they include uh, their own active releases. The uh, active release, positional release, trigger point release, self myofascial releases. Uh, other than this, we have myofascial releases that uh, muscle energy techniques and according to Lian Chaito, uh, the uh, INIT technique, uh, integrated neuromuscular inhibition technique. So he included the combination of uh, these two techniques, either positional release therapy and the stretch or MET along with uh, the myofascial release or myofascial release with a stretch. So that also you can use. So most of the time people, they ask that which technique we can apply which technique give good uh, response to the muscular pain. It is according to the therapist. The therapist is the boss to your patient, which technique is helpful. So you have to assess that you apply your own technique and you keep on assessing your patient, whether they are having a good response due to the treatment or not. So positional release therapy, I given a very simple introduction because if we talk about advances in myofascial release, I can say myofascial complex because it the wholesome we say are complex, myofascial complex. So in the myofascial complex, whatever pressurized uh, technique you apply, even massage you can apply. Whenever we are applying massage or this kind of therapist, positional release, uh, MET, IMFR. What we are going to do? We are applying a pressure over that area. Due to this pressure, the mechanoreceptors will stimulate. So this mechanoreceptors, which is going to send information to the brain, and the brain is going to secrete some of the chemicals. Uh, in that, out of that, uh, so many chemicals, the hyaluronic acid also one of the chemical which is responsible for the uh, hydration of the fascia. So in my facial release therapist, they consider that the hydration. So whenever the fascia regains the hydration over that area, so this is going to cause a gap between the muscle and the fascia. So they say potential space. The, if you are having that uh, gap in the potential space, so the sliding motion won't uh, restrict. So that only we are doing. <clears throat> so automatically you will see the uh, softness over that area due to the regaining of the hydration and the smooth movement of the uh, muscle, you can say, and that uh, tension, muscle tension also reduce and the patient have good range of motion. And the vas core, the pain score also will decrease. So all this thing which is going to apply. So this all the technique we are going to apply. First one is the positional release therapy. So this is one of the manual therapy technique. The, it is going to place the muscle in a shortened position to promote a muscle relaxation. This is not only to keep the muscle in a shortened position. Also, after keeping the shortened position of the muscle, we are going to give a constant pressure over that localized painful site. Localized painful site. This has been told by the Ambrogio and Rath. And some of the therapists, they also told like, we are not going to give a constant pressure over that area, only the shortened position itself, which give the release. So that has been told by another therapist. I think Zenith uh, is another therapist. She, in their book, she explained about uh, the shortened uh, position only, not the vertical pressure. So this uh, positional release therapy also, which is evolved by from uh, other technique that is strain counter strain technique. And uh, the clinician applies a light pressure to the myofascial trigger point throughout the treatment. So it has been came from strain counter strain technique. Nothing we are going to do. We are going to uh, shorten that muscle. 
whatever muscle you are going to release you keep the muscle in a shortened position and apply a vertical pressure over that area or don't apply the pressure but you keep it in a shortened position so that is going to give relaxation for how many minutes we have to give one to one and a half minutes so in positional release therapy we are going to keep the muscle for a 60 to 90 seconds 60 to 90 seconds so active release uh, technique it is used to treat the areas of tension or adhesions found in the muscles or surrounding the soft tissues the muscle is taken from a shortened position to lengthened position here this is the opposite to the positional release therapy <clears throat> so you know, we are going to take the muscle from the shortened position to lengthened position so uh, it is you can do like a stripping stripping along the muscle from origin to insertion origin to insertion muscle origin to insertion we are giving a stripping so that is going to give a, a lengthening of the muscle fibers so that only the clinician maintains uh, their contact with the problematic areas to keep a constant tension on the fibers of that tissue so from origin to insertion 10 to 15 strokes you have to give in a smooth manner okay so a simple stroke you can give in uh, mfr area we are giving this as a dynamic mfr technique or this technique has been also known as the active release technique so we say it is rolfing because it has been told by Ida Rolf. Ida Rolf. So it is Rolfing technique, the stripping along the muscles. Or with the instrument, you are going to release that. So instrument assisted uh, uh, soft tissue releases, we can say. So very famously, it has been known as Graston technique. So you have a uh, Graston material, then with that uh, stainless steel. Uh, material you are going to release along the muscles so any anything you can say so trigger point release <clears throat> so they say trigger point release therapy simply they say trigger point release therapy what is the trigger point release therapy that is trigger point pressure release before it has been told by the ischemic compression involving applying a downward pressure on the tender spot <clears throat> Nowadays, that ischemic compression word has been changed. That ischemic word because the myofascial trigger point area itself it is lack of uh, uh, oxygen supply. So already it has been ischemized. So that's why we, they are not using that uh, ischemic uh, uh, word. So nowadays it has been called as a sustained compression. The compression you are going to apply and you are sustaining for some times. So the downward pressure locally lengthens the sarcomeres and creates a flushing of cellular metabolic byproducts commonly associated with the myofascial trigger points, which can assist in re-establishing normal metabolic functions of the involved tissues. So in this, this technique has its own things. Self-myofascial release. So most of the uh, Athletes are the sports persons. They use this nowadays. A lot of uh, materials which is <coughs> available in the market, the foam roller, handed rolling rolling devices, or massage. Okay. So if you are going to decathlon shop, you get a lot of materials. So I, I routinely visit a decathlon shop, and I used to see what are all the trigger point release uh, material which is available. You can get it for 40 rupees, 50 rupees, 60 rupees like. So before we also get that acupressure materials. So the same thing only, but with a, a rubberized one they are making and doing the releases. Again, this is, uh, okay. So this is one minute. So handled 
rolling device, anything that I told you the grass strain technique. So one stainless steel material they have and do with the uh, release from origin to insertion, same thing. So what is myofascial release? So what? So myofascial release, it is a therapeutic technique utilizing a gentle form of stretching. So here we are going to uh, release uh, that uh, muscle with a uh, form of stretching. It have all the characteristics of uh, uh, the massage, but it is not a massage technique. And the Kegari also he told about myofascial therapy. It is the facilitation of mechanical, neural, and psychophysiological adaptive potential. This all are interfaced through the myofascial system. So we are releasing the myofascial uh, systems. So that way we are giving good improvement. So as is the basic uh, steps of uh, myofascial releases, or first of all, we have to give feedback. Most of the therapists, we don't give the feedback to the patient. Because before doing any technique, I'm going to do this technique to you and how many minutes it is going to take and how you are going to complete that technique and the instructions. Only in physiotherapy, viva times, that will be in second years, we learn the thing and we give instructions, we give instructions, we give instructions, so many instructions. But once we pass out from the second year examination, we forget all the instruction area. In the third year, we believe that we are the medical profession doctors. And in the fourth year, we all forget that instruction part. So nowadays, my actually, I, I'm telling according to my experience, my students, they are not at all giving the instructions. So when we conduct the uh, examination, uh, like a third year, fourth year, no, I, I expect that the instruction part, nobody is going to give. But out of India, if you are not giving instructions, they are going to file a case. So because you have to explain what you're going to do and the patient get the satisfaction. Yes, he is my therapist. He will do good for me. So first one is the feedback. After that, the particular part are going to stretch, stretch in a slow manner, slow manner, and hold that stretch for about one to three minutes. One to three minutes. After that, release one to three minutes. I, I hold that stretch for one minute only. And after the release, reassess that area end field how how the tissue is how the range of motion of the joint is whether you increase the joint and you uh, reduce the stiffness reduce the pain so all this thing after one release you have to ask the patient then like that a four to five repetitions you can do so that's why Feedback, a stretch, hold, release, and end fit. So I got this uh, systematic uh, review. Like right. so, they screened about nine thousand eight sixty nine articles, and they searched six databases from nineteen ninety two two thousand fifteen, and they got some evidence on my facial release, which improves. Outcomes are compared to sham ultrasound for lateral epicondylitis. Yes, in lateral epicondylitis, my facial release, which is better compared to the trigger point uh, therapy, because the trigger point therapy provide limited or no additional benefit when combined with self stretching for plantar fasciitis. But the my facial release to the gastronemias, soleus, and plantar fascia is effective. So this is, uh, for an example, I posted the uh, research article in this, for your knowledge. So the basic IMFR techniques or the cross-hand releases 
and focused releases. So cross hand releases are the basic techniques of MFR releases. Focus releases also. Focus releases means uh, to uh, one muscle we are focusing only in the trapezius area. The patient is complaining pain. So trapezius area releases we do. Uh, Sternogliodomastide we can do. Or uh, the longus coli we can do like like that. <clears throat> so this is I given for an example that advanced technique over the cervical area. What are all the advanced technique we can give? Cervical release. This is going to release the whole cervical fascia. The cervical fascia is of uh, six to eight layers. So all the cervical layers which is going to release. And uh, this technique also known as platysma spread. Platysma spread. Cranial base release. Cranial base release is going to release the suboccipital muscles and which is going to pull the myodural bridge and which relax uh, the dura mater because it is directly attached to the dura mater uh, through the rectus capitis posterior minor. So there is a bridge, myodural bridge. Muscle is the rectus capitis posterior minor to the dura at the C1 area, I think. <coughs> hair pull technique. Hair pull is uh, to release uh, another fascia in the whole area, the cranial fascia. This is okay. This is covered by the epicranial fascia. Epicranial fascia or crania aponeurotica. Crania aponeurotica. So this area we release. So I am supposed to do the uh, live demo, but unfortunately I don't have a model today. So next time, sure, I will show. Don't worry. Okay. <clears throat> because of the COVID and the Diwali vacation, so models are not available. So sure, in the next presentation I will do. Okay. And this is some of the uh, advanced techniques we apply over the cervical area. And along with this, we do basic releases also, focused releases. So over the sternogliodomastide, longus coli, trapezius, levitus scapulae, so rhomboidus, all this. Thing. So if the patient is complaining of uh, uh, radiating pain, directly the patient don't come to you, but uh, the patient will come with a complaint of a cervical spondylosis. Along with this, they have a radiating pain. So that time you can do this technique and give good relief because I did. So I am a physio, I can do. So you also a physio, you can also do. Okay. So if I am having a magical hand, you also have a magical hand. If I am a skilled person, you are also a skilled person. You can apply. So no worries in that. Okay. <clears throat> so what are the conditions I treated and that only I produce the evidences. Okay. So with all these techniques, my facial release, positional release, and the MET, no, massage, even uh, the stripping technique. This is a condition like uh, showing a cervical scoliosis. Yeah, the patient name is Arun Taplial from Dehradun only. He's one of my very old patient. So. Uh, people they told that uh, uh, he is having a cervical rib because of that he is having the thoracic outlet syndrome pain. The pain is radiating towards the right side of the hand. So I treated him. So this, this x-ray has been taken May month. The patient came to me in, uh, in the last uh, days of May and after 12 sessions you see the cervical X-ray here, see it is near normal. We won't say it is normal, it is but the straightened curvature. I, I give it, see this how it is. It is going like a snake here. Uh, the spinous process is rotated still, but uh, the patient uh, doesn't have pain. He told that uh, the vascular is zero. So I told him, take rest. Don't come to a physiotherapist. If you have the pain next, then you come and visit the physiotherapist. 
up to that no visit to physiotherapy clinics okay so this is one of the case the another case is this uh, functional scoliosis see the functional scoliosis how he is having he is having a shift in this area right side yes uh, he, his parents are uh, they thought that he is walking stylishly and he was practicing um, football also he is a very good football player and while walking he complained pain but uh, uh, his mom she told that no no ignore it then okay after that now he want to give his uh, nda exam recently he given his uh, nda exam also so we actually assessed and we found that he is having a uh, scoliosis functional scoliosis after that in the opposite side we given that a correction exercises now you see the straightening of the curvature so we corrected the upper part and the lower part also still the patient is continuing the treatment it is about a 3 month old patient now in my clinic still the patient is continuing treatment and he is having a pain but the intensity is very less and now again he is playing football this is another case he is a, a coach in cricket paritosh sir so, uh, <coughs> he came to me with a complaint of a low back pain see the curvature <coughs> there is a compensatory curvature so after the treatment about a 23rd day we we assessed we taken a x ray so this is a straightening of the curvature we found so we, we we are doing that and this is the case of a periathletic shoulder you see the elevation of the shoulder and all see he is one of the pandit in uh, dehradun uh, so he is ganpati i think his name is ganpati so he had that restricted range and the first day itself i given the improvement like this the range has been increased well we did yes see it is above uh, 90 degree this okay still he is doing a compensatory movement but on the first day itself i showed the patient he had the improvement that physiotherapy can do this is another patient and the first day itself we increased the range the abduction range as she was doing a trick motions that time now in the second diagram she is doing very clearly and easily and this is also he is a owner of a medical shop in dehradun and nowadays are living in australia so we we did this so this is i <coughs> so these are the references uh, you you can see uh, i prepared for the uh, presentations uh, so thank you so much for your valuable time so i i am not uh, telling this uh, like uh, uh, this all the techniques only you apply nothing like that so you are the boss you have to decide the technique and you apply whatever technique you know you apply that you have to believe in yourself always believe in your treatment it is not like that also you know, i don't send a patient to any other referral things you try first if you are not getting any improvement you send the patient to some any other professionals so like orthopedician orthopedic surgeon neurologist neurological surgeon so don't think that you are the only person you can treat each and everything no we are not we are not going to deal with all the cases and so is this applicable to all the professionals everybody we are trying to do something good for the patient but fortunately most of the patients we give some cure and we manage well but some of the patients we don't manage so those cases you have to do reference and you don't think that we are the only boss in the world of treating musculoskeletal 
things. No, we are in the rehabilitation team. You have to consult the other people. Okay, so with this uh, take home message, I complete uh, the sessions with uh, the advanced uh, uh, my facial release techniques. I thank uh, uh, Sanjay the uh, organizers uh, to given me the opportunity to present uh, this uh, in front of you all. Thank you so much. Okay, the special thanks to Dr. Swapnil because uh, he is a um, only man behind all this. Uh, thing and uh, i thank uh, neeraj sir and uh, rahul chobe sir thank you sir thank you very much sir yeah. sir before we uh, end the session there were a couple of queries coming up to me so just wanted to discuss regarding those oh. uh, sir out of your vast experience in massage soft tissue release techniques mfr uh, you might have come across certain dilemmas wherein what should be preferably used if at all a question which comes uh, commonly to my mind like uh, many of the students they also do ask uh, which would be a better intervention with regards to a foam rolling or a myofascial release technique when we are trying to treat the patient with the myofascial tightness your your views upon that sir please yes actually yes. it is a common view by the i don't say if it is my view whenever uh, people they are having pain if they are doing an active release like a foam foam roller and all okay even uh, the foam roller if we apply passively we don't know how much pressure we are applying but the same thing whenever we are applying passively you assess that area how the tissue which is working in your hands and uh, the patient also have that uh, healing touch feeling and uh, with pain our body don't allow that uh, it will work uh, to the beyond the limits but whenever people they are doing passively we allow that even in massage also we do if somebody will come and massaging us we can relax okay let it be apply more force also but the same force we don't apply on our body because the brain won't send the signals to us the brain always tell that i don't no don't go because i am going to prevent that if you are going to do this it is going to pain you a lot so that message is only our brain which is going to give so better is passively whatever technique we apply that will be helpful for the patient thank you sir thank you very much uh, thanks a lot arun sir and also the uh, sbs university for giving us the permission to allow you to take the webinar for this uh, physio tv channel sir uh, i would also like to thank our uh, driving force of our institute our founder president dr k s santhi sir our ever inspiring chairman dr parag santhi sir our dynamic executive director mrs manisha sangvi ma'am and our always encouraging principal sir dr vivek kulkarni sir i thank our physio tv team dr ashok sham sir mr rahul chobe sir dr apoor shimpi sir dr niraj atale sir dr manish ray dr amrita poddar ma'am and all the members of the physio team lastly i express my gratitude to all the attendees who have played a vital role for making the webinar successful looking forward for your support in the upcoming webinars as well so uh, in the future we do expect some hands on techniques from you sir oh, sure. definitely i can understand the pain you are having to demonstrate this technique i know how good you are while demonstrating the techniques i do know that but due to covid situations we can understand the limitations sir but definitely the next session we will be having with regards to the hands on sessions i am i am also not satisfied without the hands on technique i can understand the pain so i can understand that okay next time we sure we will do fully of a hands on technique yes with less uh, theoretical yes. aspects thank you sir so finally uh, i am swapnil ramtekey signing off for the session stay happy 